Today we're gonna head over to Tyler's to get an update on his coastal reef tank. Also pick up some macro algae from him and add a backlight for the Pico. Lots to do, let's go. What's up coral people? If you're new here, my name is Remy and this is the Bahama Lama Coral YouTube channel. If you would like to support the channel, the easiest way to do that is to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you're notified whenever I upload new videos. We have a lot to cover today, so let's get right to it. First of all, congratulations to my buddy Tyler. You may know him on Instagram as inland underscore reef. His tank just got featured by the folks over at Reef Builders. Well deserved. I will say that this tank is probably the ultimate coral nerds tank. We're so used to seeing all these fluorescing corals and none of the corals do that in his tank because he is constantly running white light. He actually is running a freshwater light over his reef tank and it's doing fantastic. Just goes to show you that you can have a tank with white light and it still is magnificent. Tyler and I are buddies in the reefing community here in St. Louis. He recently reached out. He said, hey, I gotta prune some macro algae. Do you want some of that for your Pico tank? Are you ready? And I said, well, you know I'm ready. I am ready for some macro algae. So we're gonna head over there in a little bit. We're gonna grab some plants and we're gonna get an update on his coastal reef tank that he said he wouldn't touch, but then he touched it so it deserves a little update. I thought I'd bring him a little something to trade, so I picked out this awesome mushroom that I got from the last frag swap. I don't know if this is a Mardi Gras or not, but it's got yellow, purple, green. It's split three times. I figured he needs one of these in his tank. All right, let's hit the road. Oh yeah, it's Friday. I'm leaving work. I'm going to head over to Inland Reef's apartment. We're gonna get an update on his tank. Also, Gonna get some macros for the Pico tank. So let's uh let's head over to Tyler's house. Alright, so I'm here for some macros, but let's get a update on this tank because i if if i remember correctly you uttered the infamous words of every reef keeper in that you were just gonna let this grow out and it looks totally different than it did last time i mean <laughs> yeah so i have a soft spot for gorgonians and whenever you find one i just i tend to pick more up and then like i said before i wanted a clam so i picked a clam up oh yeah yeah yep so that's a tridacna crocea super cool clam actually Ooh. Just noticed uh, this morning it's actually growing a new pair of scoots, so it's a good it's a good thing. It's actually doing well in this new environment. But the great thing about macros is that they they grow in really quickly, <laughs> which is nice when you have a, especially a pico tank. Your tank's gonna look really full fairly quickly, and you'll just have to trim and kind of go back to like freshwater aquascaping. So what's new? You got the clam. Uh, what else you got in here that's new? What's okay. This, what's this blue thing? So that blue thing is a, what do they call it? Colospongia? It's actually a cyanosponge. So it holds cyanobacteria in the mainframe of the sponge. So if I like tried to kill the tank or try to get cyano out of the tank, it would actually kill that sponge. Um, kind of a cool, weird one. They come in different varieties. They can be kind of a paler blue, a deeper purple, depending on the lighting. They also have a red variation as well. You got a Christmas tree worm rock? Yeah, I couldn't pass that up. That thing is, they're just so cool. Uh, it has uh, porites going on it. And so I'm trying to, I try to rest it against the rocks just to have the porites continue to grow. Um, but I think I've counted like 10 or 11 of the Christmas tree worms. No hermits, unfortunately, but the worms themselves are really cool. There's an orange one down in the bottom corner, if you look. Oh, yeah, he's really cool. Yeah, super cool looking. Yep, orange, blue. I have some white ones. And then I think I have a giant feather duster that's on the other side, but he does, you know, he's kind of turned to the back because he's just brown, but try to keep the colorful ones out front. Right. And, uh, and you put this uh, red macro in here that wasn't here before. Correct. Yeah. So I had a whole bunch of Gracilaria haya 
that I decided to move from another one of my tanks and throw it in here and even in the Pico. And so it's grown in pretty nicely. It's like the easiest macro algae to care for ever. Like if you were trying to get into macro algae, pom pom macro, I've heard it as dragon's tongue, uh, gracilaria, pretty much that's the easiest macro algae to keep. Sponges are all doing good. Yeah, your orange sponge, yeah, that it's taken off, it's looking good. Uh, I'm seeing it extend. I've been feeding phytoplankton daily, uh, not only for the clams, uh, but the Christmas tree worms and the sponges. And then if you look, there's that awesome tuna kit that's down there oh, and it's yeah. growing like, like a weed. I had to put it on a new piece of like flat rock because it's actually started to grow over uh, the sand bed. The toadstool got so big and it's perfect for the sponges because they don't need light. And really, the more light you have on sponges, usually they start to grow algae over top of them and then that can cause things where they start to rot and die out. And it looks like, is this my toadstool here? Yeah, so the little uh, two-headed one right there, that's your weeping willow compared to my massive long tentacle. This, I mean, if you remember the last video, I mean, he was small, he's taken up all the space in the world. Yeah. Uh, and it's like you gave him the room and he was like, thanks, I'll take it. Yeah, it's like a, a dinner plate size now. It's massive. Um, but I just let them grow. I mean, uh, the skunk clownfish, I love it. Absolutely love just playing in it. Well, overall, man, it's looking good. And uh, you just got featured, right? Yes. What's, what's, the, uh, what's the article so that everybody can go see it? So the article is on Reef Builders, uh, and I will post the link on my Instagram, but it is going over my uh, Gorgonian tank. And so they kind of do a little feature, uh, you know, Reef Builders does their features every once in a while with people's tanks. And so you'll get to be able to see a really cool uh, write-up done by uh, reefbuilders.com. All right, man. Well, you said you wanted to trim some of this uh, macro back, so I might take a little bit off your hands and try it for the Pico. You can have any type of macro you want in here. We'll start with the, the easiest one. This right here is Gracilaria Haya. I'll bring it over here and you can really get a cool picture of it. It's probably one of the easiest ones to keep. Yeah, nice red color. I keep it, I call it like the GSP of of macro algaes. It, it will grow in anyone's tank. Um, and we'll give you a nice big chunk of that. That'll fill in nicely. Codium, that's another cool one. He's kind of wedged in the rocks. We'll get you a nice chunky piece of that. There we go. See, this is like a, it's, it's almost rigid. Yes. It's so weird. Macro algaes come in like so many different flavors. <laughs> <laughs> Flavors is, is, is a cool, cool terminology, but yeah, this is, this is a really cool, it's like a harder type of algae. I wouldn't say it's like calcium based, uh -huh. but it is rigid in that sense. It has some flex to it. Uh, so it is a chlorpa species and a lot of people are scared of chlorpa. Uh, you shouldn't be scared of all chlorpas. The chlorpa species I'm giving here is Pauspoides, chlorpa Pauspoides. So this is what they commonly call as uh, palm tree chlorpa. Oh, okay. And palm like tree chlorpa... This looks better than the grape. Correct. <laughs> so the grape is the one that most people, that and they, I think they call it the Mexican fern chlorpa, they tend to go really quickly. They'll take all your nutrients. This, it will send a runner. It will go throughout your tank and it doesn't grow as fast. So you can cut back a lot easier. Okay. And it looks cool because each individual shoot will come up and make a really cool kind of palm tree-esque, you know, leaf pattern. Gracilaria haya, you can float it in your tank, you can attach it to the rock. Um, I don't recommend gluing or super gluing anything. Uh, that usually tends to kill that area. Take a little bit of fishing line or even like a, a small rubber band you get from like the bag you got from the, you know, fish store when you bought your last frag. Use that and rubber band it to a piece of rock and then glue that rock to your main structure. Okay. Yep. Codium, the green kind of branching looking one, just wedge it in a place in your rock work and it'll just continue to grow and I've even seen it mat from there. The Calerpa species uh, can grow in sand bed. As you can see, you can see kind of like its fine roots are starting to grow into my sand bed. 
So you can put it in the sand bed or you can grow it on the rock work and the main propagule part of it will just continue to run and keep putting off new shoots up. Let's get like a good chunky piece of this right here. This is prolifera. As you can see here, look, this is where the runners go. You can kind of see how it's starting to grow into the rock work. Mm -hmm. So we have runners that go in the rock work and we have runners that grow in the sand. And they'll continue to do that. And you can just easily kind of pull them up and you can get yourself a nice good chunk, a section of this type of prolifera. It doesn't usually go sexual, uh, not saying that it can't go sexual. And sexual means that there's a lack of nutrients within your tank. So as a way of surviving, they will essentially take all of the material that's in them and throw out gametes and all types of stuff into the water to try and grow in another area. It's a way of reproducing quickly so that way someone will survive. Yeah. And in a home aquarium, that somewhere is still in the same aquarium. <laughs> and so that's what ends up killing a lot of people's tanks because it's a huge nutrient imbalance. Yeah. And so don't be scared about Calerpa. Be scared of certain Calerpa species. Uh, all Calerpa can be maintained. It's just a matter of do you do the maintenance to clip it and clip it back? Any recommended way of uh, acclimation? So for me with macros, I don't really do any type of acclimation as long as temperature is the same. Yeah. Uh, just float it for a little bit. Float then. it for a little bit, make sure the temperatures are the same, and then I usually just put it in. Dragon's breath. It looks a little bit muted underneath this tank. Uh, this is dragon's breath. Uh, the difference is, is that you'll see it when it's under really blue lights. These top tips will become really orange and the base will be red. So I have a piece right here. Yeah, this one's harder. This one's going to be on the harder side. A lot of people I've had don't have as good of success. You can kind of see the orange tips there. They're a little bit lighter, but not everyone has great success with this macro. Some people do. Some people just can't seem to keep it. So we'll see how you do. Uh, hopefully it grows really well for you. My personal favorite macro algae uh, is blue hypnia. Uh, there's nothing cooler than seeing an absolutely beautiful blue I mean, it's just so cool because it's actually kind of, it's, it is a calcium based structure. It's harder coral. It's not the soft base and it is just absolutely gorgeous under whiter lights. I can, it's really pretty under blue lights too. I grew it in my, my old aquarium and it kind of just creates this little mat. Yeah. So we'll get a little bit for you. This one, let me see. I might have to get my scissors for this one. So you see how it's attached to a rock already. Yeah. You can super glue that rock right to the rock work. But I mean, look how pretty this is. Yeah. It's, it, it actually has an iridescent quality to it. So under the right lighting, you'll see like greens and yellows and all different colors in oh, it. That's cool. Super, super cool. Um, and then I'm gonna give you a piece of a macro that I don't actually know the, the terminology for yet. I'm still learning. I don't know what it is. It's super cool. It's like a red kind of, it's got little spines on it kind of like a fuzzy type macro. Yeah. Um, it's, it's definitely one of the harder macros, like, a, um, like as it kind of feels like it has a calcium based structure or some type. Now that's a solid little bag right there. I appreciate it. I mean, you got awesome, you know, Gresselaria, Blue Hypnia, Prolifera, the Palsporides, the Fern. You have that really cool one I don't know about yet. <laughs> um, and yeah, the, the Dragon's Breath is in there somewhere, but um, oh yeah, right there. There it is. Dragon's Breath right there. It's awesome. But yeah, that should be a sweet little starter pack for your, your Pico uh, macroalgae tank. Awesome. Thanks, man. Yeah, no problem. The macros are temp acclimated, so let's go ahead and put those in the tank.
picked up this backlight on Amazon. One of the Pico masters himself, Tigerboy H20 on Instagram suggested this. It was super cheap, so I picked it up. It comes with a remote and tons of colors to choose from. I know this is kind of weird if you have a reef tank, and this is definitely like a freshwater thing, but I figured with as much plant life that will be in this tank, it's gonna make it look really cool. If you missed the setup of this tank, I'll link that in the description and above. I frosted the background of this tank to kind of give it that look. If you wanna do this yourself, I will go ahead and link the light and the frosted background in the description below. I really love the look of the Pico being macro heavy. There is one little tiny frag of Suspicularia that kind of broke free of the mother colony in my frag tank, so I was like, eh, we'll try it out in the Pico, and it seems to be doing just fine. I think the biggest challenge with the Pico tank is gonna be keeping the nutrients up enough, feeding the plants enough, because there isn't a fish in here yet. Although I am looking to put maybe one or two tiny little nano fish in this tank. Right now it's got nothing, so I am supplementing with Kato Grow. Keto Grow? Chato Grow? I don't know, grow some algae. Basically like fertilizer. I told you this was a beast of an episode. In the last Pico update, I switched out the tanks to a rimless tank and I took a lot of your suggestions. I've done a couple 90% water changes. I, I wouldn't say it's 100% because I can't get the water out of the sand, but I'll say 90 to 95% water changes. That seems to be working quite well. I also picked up a cleanup crew, which I didn't have in the first Pico tank. I appreciate the tips and tricks, so if you have any more, leave those in the comments section below. The Pico Life is very new to me. This is the third iteration of the Pico Tank, so as you can see, I'm trying, I'm failing, I'm trying, and I'm failing, and uh, any feedback you guys have for me would be fantastic. If you like this video or any of the other videos on my channel, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you're notified whenever I upload new videos. I just totaled up the amount of videos for this year. My goal was 50 and I have 35 videos, so only 15 more for the rest of the year. That'll take us into December, so uh, crazy. I'm looking at doing some pretty cool things in December for Christmas. I mean, we could all use a little bit of cheer at this point, so I'm hoping to have some pretty awesome giveaways come that time, so just be on the lookout for that. In the meantime, thank you so much for being here, for supporting, for being a part of this awesome community. Shouts to Scott Crow. If you haven't done so yet, make sure to go check out the YouTube channel, the Facebook page, and the Instagram page for Ocean State Aquatics. They actually just released a really cool video about eels. So if you wanna get into the eel game, that's totally a possibility, even if you've got coral. Oh, guys, I wanna show you something. If you've been following this channel for a while, you've seen something, it's been pointed out, I get it, I replaced it. One second. This is my milk jug pitcher. It's disgusting. I, there might even be mold on the bottom of this. But what I did, you're gonna be so proud. <laughs> I went to the dollar store and I got actual pitchers. Check this out. <laughs> oh my gosh. A dollar for this thing. And what's cool about it, it actually has measurements on it, so I might be able to use that for some things. But I got two of them. Two dollars and 15 cents. It still blows my mind how long some of the simplest things in this hobby we put off. You know how long it took me to put a float in my RODI reservoir so that it automatically stopped and it didn't flood this place? It took forever. The part's seven dollars. And you know what? Put it in the description below. Well, get yourself a float and a pitcher and be safe and I'll, I'll see, see you next week.